Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, we're going to look at options in Linux. So we have get op and get ops. I'm going to give a brief explanation about both options and then I'm going to show examples. So get op and get ops are tools to use for processing and validating shell scripting arguments or shell script arguments. So get op without the S and get ops with the S. So you can see the similarities with both options, but they are not identical. Get ops and get op command are argument to a while loop and the while loop will then use the switch case to process the arguments. So get op without the S it's an older utility and it's not built in. So you would have to download the packages in order for you to use that option. Get op it's used to parse long variables and it is introduced with the double dash. So for example, you have dash dash help or something you may see a lot dash dash verbose. So the get up, it's used to parse long variable. Whereas on the other hand, the get ops with the S is a built-in bash command. So you don't have to download any extra packages for it. It comes with Linux automatically. It's used to parse command line option and argument to a script. So get ops use short variable, for example, dash A, dash B, dash C, or whatever you put in your argument. So I'm going to go over into the terminal and do some work with get ops. So I'm going to create a folder or a directory inside of my current folder. So I'm going to use mkdir and I'm going to call this optest. And if I do an ls, I have, I should have my optest. It's right here. My optest is here. So I'm going to cd into optest. And if I do an ls in here, there is nothing in there. So let's go ahead and create a file. So I'm going to use the touch command for that. And I'm going to create a script file. Let's call this file optest as well. So optest.sh. So let's do vi and edit the file. So now we're inside of vi. I'm going to put in my shebang as usual. I'm going to start off with hash exclamation slash usr slash bin slash env space bash to use get up you have to use it inside of a loop so i'm going to use it inside of the while loop so i'm going to say while get ops and inside of the while loop you have to pass your options so you're going to put in double quotes so inside of the double quotes I'm going to use colon and then I'm going to use the options H and T. I'm going to get outside of the double quotes and I'm going to use the variable OPT. Now to explain this line of code, I'm using the while loop and I'm using the option get ops. And for my options, I want the user to either input the options h or t and op this variable right here is just a variable that i would use in my case statement i'm going to write the do statement and i'm going to say case and you want to use the dollar sign open closing brackets and those are called expansions and i'm going to use keyword in so I'm going to explain this line of code here. So instead of the expansion parameter, you have to give the variable that you're going to use in the, the case statement. So the variable that I want to use inside of the case statement is my opt variable that I declared. So the opt variable now will hold or store the options. And the options here is either H or T. And after the case statement, I'm going to write my logic for H or T. For example, if the user enters H, I want to echo the line, you have entered H. So that's all we're going to say. So we're going to end it with a double semicolon. And we're going to say if the user enter T, then we're going to echo you have entered T. So to explain this, if we only passed two options in 
we only want the user to enter the option H or enter the option T. If the user enter H, then we're going to do something. So in this case, we're going to just echo you have entered H. In other technical um, situations, maybe if the user entered H, you want to print some data from some files, or you may want to move the data to a different location or move the file to a different location. If the user entered T, maybe you want to delete a user on the system, or you want to delete some type of directories or file. So after here, we're going to end off the statement with the double semicolon. So we can also use the colon and the colon means if the user does not enter any type of value in the parameter. So if the user does not enter any type of value, then we're going to echo dollar sign zero and we're going to say must enter a value. So let us end this statement. And one more option I want to look at is backslash question mark. And the backslash question mark means that if the user enters anything other than H or T. So for example, if the user enter A, B, C, or D, then we're going to print a specific line of code, or we're going to do something because the user only allowed to enter H or T. So if the user enter any other letter to the parameter, then we're going to echo invalid option. Okay, so let's put it in a dollar sign up tag. And now what we can do here, which will be better, so we're going to use ampersand two. So the up tag here is going to hold the variable that was passed. So if any other variable than H or T was passed, dollar sign up tag is going to hold that variable. So after that, we are going to end our statement and then we're going to close off the case with ESAC and then we want the done statement. So let us go ahead and save this with escape colon WQ which will save and quit for us. Let me clear my screen. And now we are going to run the script, but first we need execution power. So we're going to say chmod755 and the name of our script. So now we have execution power. So let me clear my screen again, because I like a clean screen. In order for you to use the script and to pass in the parameter, you have to use the dash. So let us run the script. So the name of our script is up test.sh and remember in our script we only pass the option t and the option h so if we want to use option t or option h you must use the dash so dash h and i get back you have entered h so let's run the program again and this time we're going to enter t so those are our two options we had passed. Now let's try a different option. Let's use dash E and it says invalid option. And let's go back into the VI text editor. And one more thing I want to show you before I leave. Sometimes some arguments may take two options. And in that case, you would see a while loop, something like this. So colon, and then you would see, um, let's put E. So I'll use E as an option. Sometimes you will see two colon inside of the get op options. The extra colon after the T, it means that you must use an option after T. So T cannot be the only option. You cannot use T by itself when there is a colon after the T. Inside of here, I'm going to make another statement. I'm not going to say we can use uh, case E echo. You have used, uh, let's say you have used an extra parameter. So we're just going to keep it simple. So let's save and clear the screen. I'm going to pass in the option E and it says you enter an extra parameter. So that shows that everything is working. Now let's pass in the option T and you see what it says here. Optest.sh must enter a value. Let me go back with T 
and I'm going to say dash T dash E and it, and it worked. So this line of code that says you must enter a value, this is coming from the colon. It's the line that requires you to enter a value after the colon or so if the system or if the program detects that you did not enter a value after the colon, that line will echo. So I'm going to go back into VI and show you exactly where that line is. So this line of code is right here that just echoed because we have to enter a value after the T. That's how you use options in Linux. Thank you for watching. If you do not subscribe to the channel, I ask you to please subscribe, like, share the video if you find it useful, and I would see you in the next tutorial.